Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to this week's Everton show. We've had yet another international break, haven't we? So there's no Premier League game to review this week. And of course it was also a weekend when football was very much shaded by the horrific events across the channel. Needless to say, the thoughts of everyone associated with the Everton show are with the loved ones of those who perished over in Paris. Ian Snowden is alongside me this week. Snods, I thought those lads done a, a terrific job. Football can be such a comfort and such support at difficult times. And for them to put on a decent game of football was terrific. It was. Uh, absolute tragic what's happened uh, over in Paris. And uh, I think Football United this particular evening, uh, both the French players, the, uh, the English players and both sets of fans. Uh, yeah, it's such a tragic event. But as you say, football can bring many, many people together. Mm. And uh, it was a fantastic occasion, but a sad occasion. The singing of the French national anthem by... Virtually everybody inside the stadium was so <coughs> emotional, wasn't it? It was. It was so touching. Now uh, we was in a in Southport for a uh, Southport supporters club meeting and uh, a get together, and uh, we listened and we watched, and uh, yeah, it were quite humbling. Well, this is what we've got for you in this week's Everton show. I have a lot of dancing in every game when I score. I do <laughs> little bit dancing. It's really good for me because this is the longest injury I've ever had really, three months out. I've only ever been out a month or so at a time. So it's all new to me like, so I'm delighted to do that here. I just come down to see the local supporters club to uh, meet and greet and, and spend a bit of time with them and uh, answer a few questions that they've got. We've got a number of events um, in mind for next year, but what we really want to do is uh, talk to the group of people who are here tonight. We think we've got about 150 people here. Yeah, it's, it's a frustrating time. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm the most difficult. Uh, we've got a couple injured now that I would say are. Snods, let's start our discussion this week talking about the Republic of Ireland Bosnia game. The Irish were terrific, weren't they? Yeah, I'm absolutely delighted for, uh, for our four, four guys. Uh, Aidan, um, Darren Gibson, uh, Seamus Coleman and finally James McCarthy. Brilliant for them. Uh, I'm sure they'll be looking forward to this summer now immensely. But they did, they did a great job. Um, they had to go out, obviously it was uh, one all first leg and uh, they knew a nil-nil result would have been good enough for them. But uh, now they set the stall out. I thought they got a dubious penalty, <laughs> but you'd take that all day long. And it's a fantastic result for them. And uh, the Irish will go out there in force. They were owed a dubious decision in their favour, weren't they, after the Thierry Henry nonsense mm. a few years ago? Yeah, I remember that. And ball at the back post and, uh, yeah, it was so blatant. But, uh, yeah, the bit of luck that they got with a penalty. And uh, the Evertonian, the fan, John Walters, mm. uh, who is an Evertonian, put the, uh, put the ball in, in the net from the spot and then went to go on and get a second one. So, fantastic scenes, I'm sure, in Dublin and... Uh, There'll be fantastic scenes over in France come the summer with uh, with the colourful Irish army. Well, they just. Well, everybody at Everton will now be eagerly awaiting the draw for next summer's European Championships, and that, by the way, is made in December. Well, down at Finch Farm this week, the schedule has been somewhat disrupted by the sporadic returns of international players, but the atmosphere amongst the staff has been great. It always is. Indeed, the Blues assistant manager, Graham Jones, has been telling us all about the team spirit amongst the staff and the skill of Roberto Martinez in assembling his backroom team. And obviously, I was his, uh, proud to say I was his first signing. Um, which, if you know Roberto, means a lot. Uh, we inherited uh, Richard Evans at Swansea, who's the head of performance. But Roberto knew Richard's strengths from his time as a player there. So we immediately worked with him. He had a great relationship with him. I developed a great relationship with him over a period of time. Uh, we got re recommended in Yaki Bagara uh, as a goalkeeping coach. He came over initially in Yaki to see how it went. And nine years later, he's still here. Um, Dennis Lawrence was a, a, a player that um, we had uh, in our team, our first team at, at Swansea and uh, you, you learned straight away of his values and his integrity and the respect that he, he carries. Uh, I think he wanted to finish his career off and joined us five years ago. And then obviously um, meeting Duncan Ferguson here with um, Duncan's creativity and his Everton background and um, his experience at the club. So the last one, but certainly by not means least, was Kevin Reeves, who was uh, there at the beginning. He was he'd been in the job at Swansea a month. Uh, Roberto knew Kev 
Uh, Kev was his, his assistant manager when he played, and the three of us just hit it off immediately, and it's still a really, really uh, close and tight bond today, to, until today, so that's really the, the group immediate staff that, uh, that's running Everton at the minute. Speaks well, Bonner, as we call him, Graham Jones, doesn't he? Yeah, good lad, good lad. Uh, I know he played his football in uh, the lower leagues. I, well, he played for uh, one of my clubs as well, Doncaster Rovers, but he played Wigan. But I've got a lot of time for Graham. He speaks really, really well on the game. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's great that Roberto can bounce off him. And I think they make a good partnership. I wouldn't like a rocket off Graham Jones. He was a he was a hard case centre forward, wasn't he? Of the old school variety. He, yeah, he was. He used to put yourself about. There's no question about that. But uh, yeah, I think uh, Roberto's the more mild mannered. But he definitely, as he say, you can see that on the touchline uh, when he gets up and he, he's quite boisterous. And uh, yeah, the lads seem to like him. As a player, Snods, how important is it to have a settled backroom staff and a good set of lads amongst the backroom staff? Yeah, it's great. It's, it's good that. Um, you get two different type of people. We had Howard Kendall, who uh, loved joining in, loved having a laugh. And, and then we had Colin Harvey, who were more serious. He was the coach. He stood on the sidelines uh, most of the time and give the players one or two rollickings if we weren't putting it in training. So I think they've got a good blend like these two have as well. So, uh, yeah, it's really important. We had we had good characters, the Doc Irving, who's still there to this day. <laughs> we had big John, uh, John Clinkard. Mm. Uh, the physio was a great laugh, but had to be serious as well. So we had a good blend. Yeah, we have now. They're a good set of lads to work with down at Finch Farm. Well, there have been plenty of highs along with the odd lows this season for Everton, and one of the huge plus points has been the smile, the big wide smile on the face of Aruna Kone on a regular basis as well. After a terribly tough time for the best part of two years, the Ivorian is finally loving life at Goodison Park, and he tells us now why he's happy to keep cleaning Romelu Lukaku's boots, albeit as part of a celebratory routine. Yes, uh, I speak with Rom uh, before uh, the start of this season. When I give me a good good pass, and when I score, I clean high boot, and it same when I give him the the pass as well, I clean my boot, and it is little bit celebrating for us. Hopefully we're going to see that a lot this season. But do you think we might see a, a different celebration at some stage? Yeah, different. Uh, I think uh, the last hat trick for me, I I do a little bit every course dancing. Is uh, each year we we have new dancing in every course in. I have a lot of dancing in every game when I score, I do <laughs> a little bit dancing. Uh, speaking of Romelu, you've got quite a good partnership with him. Do you try and guide him a little bit using your experience? Yeah, he's, he's my friend outside in the pitch and I speak a lot of we, with him. And I, I try to, to help him to become a good tracker. Aston Villa this weekend, it's a tough game, new manager, so it's going to be hard. Yeah, I look for the last game in against City. Aston Villa play very well and I think Aston Villa come here with more... Uh, I think we... We we try to to win the game because now we return a good moment. We got a, a draw against West Ham and now we we have to win this game to to take the three point. It it will be better for for us. Snods, thanks to to this fella here with a big smile on his face and of course big Rom. We look as if we've got goals in us every game. Yeah, it is. It's important that you've got goals from different areas of the uh, areas of the pitch. But I think um, since Aruna's come into the team, I think Rom looks stronger because he's further up the pitch. Mm. We've got goals in Aruna. We've got uh, Romelu up front. We've got Jerry Delafeu who can score goals, and we've also got Ross Barkley breaking from. Uh, 
from midfield. So we've got plenty of goals in us. And even lads that are not getting game time at the minute have got goals in them. Little Ozzy, uh, Kevin Morales and Stephen Naismith. So we've got bundles of goals in us. It's important we keep clean sheets at the other end and uh, the boys do it up top. How important is it as a defender? to have players in the team who will take their chances. There must have been games where you've defended for your life, you've been on the back foot, and the strikers just can't put the ball in the back of the net. If you've got a reliable goal scorer, it makes your job a lot better. I've been in many games like that, to be quite honest. Um, yeah, it's difficult when you are playing against decent sides, especially away from home, when they're always attacking you. You're defending, as you said, for your life. You're keeping, trying to keep a clean sheet. You're doing your job. And then one or two chances appear now and again at the other end and they miss them. <laughs> it becomes really frustrating. But uh, we didn't do bad in our time. We had uh, we had likes of Sharpie and Adrian Heath up front and goals in Kevin Sheedy and Trevor Stevens. So when we were defending, uh, they scored the goals to put us on, on the road to victory. Well, there's plenty more goals to come from Aruna Kone as well, I'm sure of that. And that brings us to the end of part one <coughs> of this week's Everton show. Still plenty more to come this week, though. In part two, we bring you the thoughts of young Kieran Dowell as he fights his way back to full fitness. And we take a look at a visit to the Southport Supporters Club and the launch event for a brand new Everton business club. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> Welcome back to part two of this week's Everton show. Well, teenager Kieran Dow was one of a number of young players who were offered an opportunity to impress Roberto during the summer, and Kieran certainly took his with both hands. He particularly stood out to me in the two-match tour of Scotland. All seemed rosy in Kieran's garden, but an ankle ligament injury stopped him in his tracks. He's back to full fitness now, though, and he's desperately keen to make up for lost time. Yeah, it's... Um really good for me because this is the longest injury I've ever had really, three months out, I've only ever been out a month or so at a time, so it's all new to me like, so I'm delighted to be back here. This has obviously been a, a difficult time, but how's the rehabilitation gone? Um, I've turned, tried to turn it into a positive, like because with me building that I've tried to um, go in the gym, get, get a lot bigger and also study the game as well while I've been out, so I've, I've used my time well to be fair. Great way to return this weekend with a goal. Yeah, yeah, I was happy with that, yeah. Um, good win for the side, keep the 18s streak going. I've had a shot, it's been blocked, and then it's come back to me from the right. I've um, come inside and curled on into the top corner. So happy with that. We talked about the disappointment of the injury, but particularly given how involved you were with the first team in, in pre-season, how tough yeah. was that? Yeah, that was the biggest thing, really. Um, I was with, with the training with the team and that, and... Um, just a really unfortunate time for me, full fitness, stuff like that. But um, it happens in football. What's your target now then to, to get back and... Yeah, get, get fully fit first, um, get, get as many games as I can, catch up with all my minutes and training and stuff and um, see what happens. Snods, there's never a good time for a player to get injured, but young Kieran was doing so well pre-season, wasn't he? He certainly was. He's a good, good talent, good player. I know Joe Royal really fancied him before his injury. I'm sure he still does because, uh, all right, it's been an ankle injury. I'm sure he's 100% right now. Uh, he'll have the, the right medical uh, service off our staff. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him back in, uh, back in play, back in contention and uh, back on the pitch. Kieran had to make sure, and I'm sure, as you say, he got the right advice, that he didn't rush things because he'd made an impression in the summer, desperately keen to build on that but you can't be rushed back. You can't come back as a young player until you're 100% ready. Yeah, and I think a lot of credit now goes to the medical uh, staff because they won't rush you back. They've not, they've, they don't need to, Daz. Uh, we've got big squads at, at every level, so you, you, you're not forced to rush back, whereas in our day when, when you were injured, probably played 80%. 90% fit because the, the squads weren't that big so they wanted you back but uh, nowadays they don't he'll have had the right uh, he'll have the right service he, he will be 100% fit when he gets back on that pitch again he was doing his rehab alongside a few others one of which was Leighton Baines mm. that must help him along because you know as well as anybody when you're doing your rehab on your own it's soul destroying it must be yeah, it is difficult and if you've got one or two pros around you especially experienced pros like Leighton who's been injured he'll be able to learn off his professionalism. He really will, the way he conducts himself, the way he trains, and the way he rehabilitates himself, which Leighton's worked tirelessly hard to, uh, to get back to fitness. And, and it'll have rubbed off on Kieran. He'll have gone in and have been determined as well to get fit. And it's great that you have got three or four injured. It's not great 
three or four injuries, believe me, but it's great for you personally when you're not training on your own, you've got three or four people around you, you can bounce off each other and have a laugh and take your mind off your injury now and again. How tough is it to do it on your own? Yeah, it is. I, I went through pff, a long time, uh, just me and Les Elm, the old physio, <laughs> and uh, Les had a bit of banter about him, so I uh, we used to give each other a bit of stick, but it is quite difficult when you're on your own, you, uh, you're away from your teammates, they're going out having a bit of banter on the training pitch, you're stuck in that treatment room. There's nothing, nothing worse. It's mentally difficult, isn't it, as well it as physically tough. difficult? Well, fan engagement is always very high on the list of priorities at Everton Football Club. The relationship we have with our affiliated supporters clubs is something we're extremely proud of. Our philosophy is a simple one. You come to see us every week, so we'll come and see you when we can. The latest visit took us up the coast to see the Southport Supporters Club and another good night was had by all. I just come down to see the local supporters club to uh, meet and greet and, and spend a bit of time with them and uh, answer a few questions that they've got. It, um, it shows the togetherness of, of the club and, and the idea of, uh, of keeping, us, keeping us all together as a club but um, it also gives the fans a, a chance to, to voice any, any opinions or even concerns they might have. Yeah, it's a very good night. Uh, all the questions we were we were asking were answered as far as we were concerned in the correct manner. It's brilliant. We had four of these over over the last few years, and they've all been fully subscribed. Couldn't get any more people in tonight. So it's been a great night. Enjoyed every minute of it. We're making a conscious effort this year to get out and see as many supporters branches as we possibly can. Uh, we've seen Croston, we've seen uh, the lads down in London before the West Ham game. We've been here tonight at Southport as well, and it'll be a one of many that we'll, we'll be seeing over the course of the season. You know, if, if there's any Australians or you know, people in Dubai and America, just, just, just give us a shout, we'll be out. <laughs> that looked another good night, Snuds. Yeah, it was. Ozzy were in great form as well. I know he was about two or three minutes late and uh, Christine, one of the girls from Everton, mm. texted him, how far you're away? And it, Ozzy, as Ozzy does, said, oh, I thought it was tomorrow. <laughs> so she were panicking like hell, but when eventually come in, he were great. He were in great form, signed everything, had pictures took, interacted, which he expects Ozzy to do anyway. But yeah. And then me and Diamond did the, um, uh, Richard Kenyon did the last half an hour, 45 minutes. It went very well. And it was great to get out there, uh, yeah. to see the supporters, and they do appreciate it. What I like about these supporters club visits, any fan visits that we have, we were in London, of course, mm. a couple of weeks ago, the queue for autographs and photographs with yourself and Diamond is every bit as big as the queue for the current players. They just don't forget our fans, do they? No, they don't. And, and it's quite nice uh, when, we, when we are signing things that people still appreciate the ex-players. Mm. It, it, it is fantastic. But it's, I'm afraid it's all about the, uh, the current players, and, and it is. And it's fantastic for the first-team lads to come along and just give a little bit of time up for them supporters who travel up and down the country to, uh, to cheer them on and, and to watch them. What you get now more and more with yourself and Diamond is, can you sign this for me, Mum? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> granny with me. <laughs> but no, it, it is it is good, and uh, some of the questions are great, mm. and they are good evenings, and it was fantastic because two young kids as well won the signs, one signed ball and one uh, trained top of Aussie, so and it went to young kids, so it was a fantastic night. Absolutely brilliant. You can't hook the young supporters soon enough, can you? They are the future of the football club. Well, on the same night that Snods, Diamond and Aussie were enjoying the excellent company of the Southport Supporters Club, I was at the Hilton Hotel in Liverpool alongside Roberto Martinez and Robert Elston, exalted company for sure, and all to help launch a new club initiative. We call it the Everton Business Club. Uh, we're here at the Hilton tonight. It's for the uh, launch of the Everton Business Club. The Everton Business Club is a very simple concept, really. It's about putting Evertonians who work in Liverpool, who are in the business community together, um, to, to network, uh, to potentially do a little bit of business together, maybe to learn from each other's organisation, um, but most of all, just to get together with the common interest and talk about Everton. We've got a number of events um, in mind for next year, but what we really want to do is uh, talk to the group of people who are here tonight. We think we've got about 150 people here and find out what they'd like to get from the business club. We know we're going to do an event in December, which will be an event with former players, um, either at Finch Farm or Goodison. But really after that, it's up to the members of the club to get together and, and help us shape what they want their club to be. We've had uh, two interesting uh, 
uh, discussions and a bit of a Q&A with uh, Robert, the chief executive, and uh, Roberto, obviously the manager. And uh, I think they, they shared some good insights into, into the club and their, their philosophies. And uh, I think the, uh, the group here really, really enjoyed it and hopefully got a lot from it. And uh, the first of many good club meetings, I'm sure. Quite an enjoyable evening. Very good. Uh, good company, I thought. The chief executive and the manager were uh, very good, if not inspirational. I think that to link in with the business community is long overdue. So it's uh, been a real insight into the uh, the football world in terms of a business perspective, and uh, great to meet fellow Evertonians in business. Interestingly, Roberto also brought it back to business matters as well, which gave us an insight to some of the dealings that he has to. Uh, to put up with on a day-to-day -day basis, so it was excellent, really good. I'm into the telecoms industry. I own a telecoms company in Knowsley. I do a lot of business networking, um, and I think this, you know, I think it's very, very cost-effective as well. But you know, there's nothing better. One of the first questions I ask when I have interviews with people who I don't know is, "What team you support?" I know everybody who I'm sitting with, you know, is an Evertonian. So the, the, that uh, that opening line's really easy. So yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased. A great start to the Everton Business Club then? Yes, definitely. I certainly will be back for it. Um, we've, we've got some really good contacts this evening and uh, networked. It's, it's been excellent. I think that sums us up as a football club, Snods. On the same night that we've got people up the coast in Southport integrating with the Southport Supporters Club, we've got a meeting in the city centre with the business community. You, you have to embrace everybody, and we do. We certainly do, and uh, it was great to see Roberto there. The chief exec, Robert Elston, his deputy chief exec, uh, Denise, were there. And Richard Kenyon actually went to the Hilton and then shot straight to over to, uh, to Southport. So it, it does. We, we try and see everybody we possibly can. And football is a business, does, But it's also a sport that everybody enjoys the game worldwide. And uh, I think we've got it right on both accounts. Roberto, during that business club meeting, mentioned the, the business side of football management. Is, is that what put you off? Yeah, it's... I got I got into uh, management all at lower lower down at Doncaster Rovers, but there's still a business element to that. And I used to love the players going out. I made sure that they went out in the community and visited schools, hospitals, etc., just as we do. But the business side of it, I didn't really understand. I was only 34 myself when I got the job, so it was hard to understand. But I, I do understand now all about it. It's a different world, though, isn't it? Managing Doncaster Rovers, with all due respect, mm. and managing in the Premier League. Not without a doubt. Um, the, the pressure on the manager for a start but you've got pressure at every level whether it's Doncaster or whether it's Everton but uh, obviously financially and everything like that business wise Everton is a massive massive club. You speak about finances in football and, and players wages I love it when people ask yourself and Sharpie and Diamond and Pat Vanden Howe what have you would you have your time over again with all these riches and you all say no you wouldn't. No I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, yeah the financial side would be nice but um, I enjoyed my time. I'm sure all the boys I played with during football have enjoyed themselves. So, no, not for me. You can't put a price on memories like that, can you? No. Well, that's about it. That's half time in this week's Everton show. After a short break, we'll bring you our big interview. And this week, we speak to a man who made a terrific early impression on the Evertonians and now has to do it all again after an injury layoff. Don't miss Tom Cleverley coming up in part three. <laughs> Welcome back to part three of this week's Everton show. It's time now for our big interview. And this week we speak to a man who joined us in the summer and was really making his mark as we made a solid start to the season. Sadly though for Tom Cleverley, that promising beginning to his Everton career was stalled by an ankle injury that he picked up at Tottenham at the end of August. It's been a tough road back for Tom, but he's now looking forward to making a contribution to the rest of the campaign. I don't think uh, any player ever wants to get injured, but just when you're settling in at a new club, um, and finding your feet pretty fast, which I thought it was, it, it's even a bit more frustrating. Uh, I went through the same when I broke into the first team at United, I got quite a serious injury then. Um, so, you know, you've just got to back yourself to come back from it, work as hard as ever, and, uh, and hopefully when I do come back into the team, uh, it feels like I've never been away. Were you pleased with how quickly you settled? Yeah, I always think I can improve, but um, I thought, the first five five games that I started every game and and um, yeah things were going well we, we got some good results in some tough games but since I've been out the side the team have been doing fantastic as well um, 
we've had some very difficult fixtures and and hopefully now we can um, go unbeaten the last two games and go, go on a bit of a run from now on in. You battled your way back from the first injury on the bench for the Arsenal game, then missed the last three games. What happened there? Uh, yeah, I think whenever you have a long-term injury, you're always susceptible to a couple of hiccups. So I had just a little hiccup on, on one training session um, with, with my groin, but um, that, that's that's... You've got to expect that. It's hard coming back from a long layoff, but now I feel as fit as ever now and I'm ready to go. That's good. Yeah. Training all been going well so far. Yeah, I think the international breaks are definitely periods where you can really get full fitness, match fitness, and uh, we've been training hard and and yeah, I feel I feel fully fit and um, and excited to get back into into what's an exciting period for the club. What would it mean to you then to? Make you come back at last this weekend against one of your former teams as well. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. I mean, um, back at Goodison, it's a good opportunity for us to get three points uh, against one of my previous clubs. Um, it, it'd be special for me, but I think the main thing is the team performance, and um, and we get three points. What sort of injured player are you? Have players come in and talk about being a pain in the backside to the the medical team? Some climbing the wall, some kind of just take it all in their stride. How, how are you when you're in there? Yeah, it's it's a frustrating time. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm the most difficult. Uh, we've got a couple injured now that I would say are. But um, no, I think you've you've got to use it as a time to improve other areas. So you do a lot of strength work and maybe look, watch videos and things like that. So you've, you've got to improve other areas. You can't see it as a as a time off. Obviously, you've got a lot of time to fill when you are out injured as well. What do you like to do away from the training grounds when, you, when you're chilling out and, and having to fill those hours? Yeah, well, with injuries, you can't play golf or things like that. So you, you, your family's important to you at that time. You, 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 your wife and kids, they, they see you through, take your mind off not being able to play. And yeah, so it's it's been a difficult couple of months, but um, I've got the right people around me and, and I'm at the right club to to get me back where I want to be. You mentioned Villa before, uh, going playing against them at one of your former teams. What are your memories of your time there? Fun time at Villa Park? Definitely, yeah. Uh, I'd, I've got a lot of good memories from that club, getting to the cup final. Stay, staying up was a massive achievement last year, but our, looking at our position at Christmas. So, yeah, I, I look back at Villa and I think achievement rather than disappointment, so it was a good time. It's been all changed since you were there, even in such a, a short space of time. Do you feel sorry for Tim Sherwood? Yeah, I do. I thought he was a fantastic manager and I thought it was just what what the club needed at that specific time. He gave everyone a lift. He's, he's got a lot of energy as a, as a manager and um, I'm sure he'll be back and get a good job. And um, Yeah, like you said, there's a lot of new players that I've not played with and now a new manager, so it's a, lot of, it's a very different club to what I was at last year. Yeah, a lot of new faces, as you say, and there's young lads as well, though, like Grealish and Akora. Do you feel like Remy Gard's got a lot to work with there? Definitely. Uh, Jan Jack Grealish has got fantastic ability. Um, he's, a good, he's a good lad as well. He might get the wrong perception at times, but he's, he's a good lad. He wants to do well as a player. Um, and, yeah, Kieran Clark, Ashley Westwood. There's some really good players there, so there's some threats that we need to take care of. They seem to have a lot of pace in the side. Um, and I'm sure the new manager will have them more organised than ever, so it'll be difficult to break down. Of course, one of the highlights, I guess, uh, of your time there was scoring against Everton. Do you get much stick in the, in the dressing room for that? I won't expect to get some stick this week, maybe. <coughs> no, no, I mean, uh, I was just doing my job on that day, and obviously um, I was doing my best to impress people, and um, hopefully I can get another goal in, in that fixture, but, but for... Everton this time. I'm sure the fans would love to see that. Obviously, last game at home, 6-2 win over Sunderland. Do you feel there's going to be like an expectation now to, to go on and, and build on that victory at Goodison? Um, yeah, I think we're an exciting side. We've got goals amongst us, but um, at, at the end of the day, 6-2 win is the same as a well goal difference. But I'm sure we would take a 1-0 victory and be very satisfied with a solid defensive performance as well. So... Um, well, we'll be working all week just to get the three points and, and how we do it, we're, we're not too worried. 
you mentioned before that the team's good form while you've been out. Um, what have you made of some of the performances, some of the results? It, the manager said that the next batch of games up to Christmas are going to be possibly the most important of the season. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been some very consistent performers in our team and, and they're the ones that we can rely on. And the, the pleasing thing is p people are chipping in with goals from everywhere. So um, it's, it's a, I think it's a confident squad at the, the moment. We lost two tough games, but we've reacted really well to that. And uh, like you said, moving forward, we, it's a real opportunity for us to, to hopefully be, be in the top four or, or there or thereabouts come Christmas and uh, in a cup semi-final. One of the players who you wouldn't have played with before you came to Everton, Gerard de la Fe, starting to have a, a more and more important role in, in the team. Scored a hat-trick for Spain under-21s last week as well. What have you made of Gerard since you arrived here? Yeah, I think he's he's a real game changer. He's he's got that spark that can that can change even games into in our favour. So he's a massive asset to the squad and and he's he's a very talented player. Yeah. And then just finally for you, then your your targets now. You are back fit. What do you hope to achieve for the rest of the season? Yeah, those things that I've just said. Really, I think the fixtures we've had and the results we've got. I think there's there's no stopping us finishes, finishing in one of those European spots. Um, obviously targets change throughout the season but I think that's realistic for us at this point and um, I said at the start of the season when I first come it's it's a club that and a set of fans de that deserve cup runs and we're in the quarter final now hopefully we can get through to the semi-final and, and having had a cup final last year I know what lift it can give to a club so that's really important for me and for the other players that, that we really do try and get, get to Wembley. Have we missed them studs, Tom Cleverley? Yeah, I think we have. Uh, he speaks so well, just listening to him there does as well. He realises what being an Everton player is all about. Mm. You've got to be in the ump for trophies, it's a big club, it's got great support. So he realises exactly what being an Everton player is all about and we have missed him. I thought, I didn't really know a lot about Tom before he came. I obviously I knew he played for Man United at an early age, he got an England cap went on to Aston Villa on loan and then we came in for him but I've been highly impressed in the games that we've seen of him uh, I think he's done a terrific job wherever he's played he's got he's got an energy a vitality about him hasn't he and, and as he says he settled in really well he has settled in really well the lads uh, seem to get on with him he seems to get on well with all the lads you can see during his general play that he, he he don't like responsibility. He wants to work hard as well. And if you want to work hard and you want to accept responsibility of the ball and that, the players will like you anyway. There's no reason why he shouldn't discount his chances for England at next summer's European Championships. No, not at all. We've got some good young talent. Uh, showed against France the other day. We've got some uh, young lads that are, are coming on really, really well, both at international level and especially our boys at club level. But no, there's no reason why he, Tom's still only a young lad and uh, he, he will improve over the next couple of seasons as well. So he'll be aiming for a, a Euro place if his performances are good when he does get back. He said it's important to settle in quickly and he obviously came here to Everton <coughs> wanting to impress his teammates early doors. What was that like for you? Because you joined an Everton side that was one of the best in Europe. Mm. We paid a few bob for you, full value for money, I hasten to <laughs> add. But it must have been difficult for you because you needed to hit the ground running, didn't you? You had no choice. I was quite nervous, as I really was, even really? though I, yeah, I was, even though I'd come from Leeds United, or all right, we're in the old uh, second division, so it was the first division then that Everton was in. Um, I was captain, uh, and I was asked a lot from Billy Bremner and my teammates to perform week in and week out. When you come to a team like Everton, and you've got all these stars, international stars. You are. I was quite nervous, and I remember the first morning uh, we were doing corners four. And Howard sent me out to take a couple of corners and he said, whip him into the near post for the flick on and then a couple of lads will attack it from the... I couldn't even get off the floor. <laughs> the, fir <laughs> the first two corner kicks, I swear, they didn't even leave the ground and Adrian, he shouted to Howard, how much have we paid for him? <laughs> <laughs> so I felt a bit silly and then Howard went, yeah, you're right. He said, when we're taking corners, when we're having corners for you, he said, you just defend on the halfway line. <laughs> Use your pace to defend. <laughs> Did the big price tag play on your mind, Snods? Not really, not really. I think being wanted by both Liverpool and Everton 
uh, played on my mind more than the fee, mm. to be quite honest, uh, because there were two massive clubs. There were no question about it. Probably the best two clubs in Europe, as you say, at the time. But uh, no, I knew what I was joining. I knew I was joining a fantastic club, a fantastic players, and uh, I just wanted to impress. But unfortunately, I'd say first 12 months, I didn't really impress. <laughs> <laughs> and they weren't just great players, they were strong characters. Oh, they? they'd let you know if you weren't doing the business, <laughs> they'd let you know. Well, that brings part three of this week's show to a conclusion. After the break, we'll be looking ahead to the Premier League game with Aston Villa on Saturday. We'll get Kevin Sheedy's take on the Irish qualification for Euro 2016. And Leon Osman shares a bit of his frustration. So don't go away. Welcome back to the fourth and final part of this week's Everton show. Well, as Snods and I discussed at the top of the programme, the Irish boys have a real spring in their step this week, and so has a genuine Everton and Republic of Ireland legend. Kevin Sheedy played in European Championships and World Cups for the boys in green, and he's delighted that the likes of Coleman and McCarthy will get to experience big tournament football next summer. Yes, fantastic. I mean, a real tough group and, um, you know, to go to a, a playoff game home and away and I think the, the players really handled the situation. Uh, to have two games in, in a short space of time, you know, the preparation was spot on and, um, you know, just the, I didn't actually go to the game, but the, the atmosphere looked fantastic and Dublin would have been bouncing. So something that the players, you know, Seamus, um, James can really look forward to, you know, they've got to knuckle down at Everton, obviously, but there's a big carrot at the end of the season, you know, looking back to when I played in it, 1988 in Germany, fantastic uh, to play against the best players in the world and um, you know you, you go there and enjoy it and you look back when the career's finished and you can say well you know I played in the European Championship so the, the players are really looking forward to that. What will it mean to the likes of Seamus, James, Darren and Aidan? Well, you watch you watch the, those type of competitions on the, on the telly, and you know you, you see all the great goals and the great you know games in the past, and you, you know it's an opportunity for for some of those players to put their mark on the European Championships and World Football. So it's an opportunity that you know I was I was pleased to really look back. Played in the World Cup as well, so it's, it's fantastic memories and the enjoyment and memories you get from that. You know you, you can always have them. So uh, I'm sure the players are, can't wait. And I'm sure Ireland won't just go there to make up the numbers either, will they? Not at all, no. When Bayern's a very good team, I mean, West Germany, the champions, you know, one nil. Uh, so it just shows that the talent that is there. The players are playing, and you know, for top teams now, and that helps the, the international team. And I'm sure they'll go there full of confidence. Uh, they can beat anybody on a one-off game. So um, you know, I'm really looking forward to it, and I'm sure the the, the players will relish the opportunity. And the fans love a major tournament, don't they? They are indeed. I mean, they're fantastic. They travel everywhere. There's, there's never any trouble, or you know, they always just stay for a good time, support, get right, right behind the team, and really enjoy themselves. So you know, people be saving up now and looking how they're going to get over to France. But uh, no, it'll be be fantastic tournaments. And might you get over there? I'm hoping to. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, I'd love to get over there and sample the atmosphere. So um, I keep my fingers crossed. Your old mate Sheeds looks well there after his knee operations, but I tell you what. It doesn't look as well as he did during the Italian 90, does he? <laughs> Good facials on Kev, by the way, but uh, no, nah, great lad. Uh, one of my best, uh, best mates when I was playing for Evan and probably still one of my best mates now, uh, many years on. So we were only out uh, talking and socialising last week. So uh, great fella, I've got time of day for Kev. What a footballer. Oh, one of the best, one of the best I've played with. Would you say so? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the left peg on him, he could... Uh, he could peel an orange with it, as they say in football. <laughs> but no, he was a terrific player. And pressure, if you had penalties or free kicks that you needed to mm. score, just put this man in front of the ball and he'd score nine times out of ten. He was a goal scorer, wasn't he, Sheeds? <coughs> she not just from dead ball situations. Mm. No, he was. He, uh, he he scored many goals at the back post. Uh, I don't think he scored many headers. I think no. you recall he scored one header, he was saying, <laughs> and he closed his eyes. But uh, <laughs> some of the goals he scored were absolutely fantastic. He, he was his way... Waiting gold on the football pitch. The wand of a left foot. Well, Leon Osman is a good pal of both mine and Snod's, and we both know how proud Ozzy is to be the 12th in the all-time Everton appearance list. Ozzy passed 400 games in all competitions last season, and that's why he's still adjusting to being something of a bit part player this time around. A little frustrating, to be honest. Um, you know, hoping for a bit more game time, especially in the Premier League. Um, but I played in the in the cup, and, and we're, we're through to the quarter-finals. We've um, you know, we've had a solid start in the league, so um, things are looking positive. Is it a case of just being patient and when you get that chance, taking it? That's the plan. Um, train as hard as you can and be ready for, for if a chance comes along, you've got to then take it. 
and we've got Aston Villa up next. They've just got a new manager. What have you made to the um, start to the season so far? Uh, well, they'll be disappointed with their start. You know, they're in they're in the relegation zone, and um, you know, had to get a new manager in. So, um, you know, this is the, the time that it'll be difficult to play them. You know, they've, they've got a new manager. They'll be hoping to impress to to get themselves uh, in the team, and, and they'll be looking to push up the league as a team. So, it's going to be a difficult game, but you know, we're we're confident we can win it. And obviously, like you said, they just drew against Manchester City, so it is going to be a tough game. That they'll have, obviously have a lift with the new manager coming in. Absolutely, you know it's um, it always happens when new managers come in. They uh, they tend to give the club a lift. They tend to to um, you know really instill a belief within the team. So um, it's up to us to, to to basically try and knock that out of them. <laughs> it must be tough for Ozzy at the moment, Snod. He's been such a permanent fixture of the Everton first team for so long. Mm. He's a good player, good lad. Um, vitally important that he's still with the squad. Mm. Um, yeah, it is frustrating when you're not getting as much game time as you want, but. When Ozzy's required, he will come on and give his utmost. Uh, there's no question about that. And uh, I know he was asked uh, at the supporters club that we was at in Southport, one of the first questions, what do you fancy doing, Ozzy, when you do retire? Are you taking your coaching badges and do you want to become a coach or a manager? And he says, no, I want to be an ambassador like these two. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but no, he's got, he's had the club at art since he was 10 years old. He's still great uh, around the place. He's fantastic. He's one of the Mickey takers of the club. Uh, and I know every prank around there involves Aussie and Ibo, etc. So, uh, no, he's vital to Everton's team that he still remains at Everton. Nothing more dangerous than Leon Osman with time on his hands. <laughs> well, as I said, Aussie was 12th in the all-time appearance list at nine. He's closing in on those above him. Dixie Dean himself is in 10th place, just 13 games ahead of Leon Osman, although the difference in goals tally is a mere 325. <laughs> Let's hear now from the manager. Roberto Martinez has been speaking to the Everton show about the historical significance of the league's most played fixture as his Everton side prepare to face Aston Villa on Saturday afternoon. Well, yes, I think it's that, it's that fixture, isn't it? I think Everton, Aston Villa, has, over the years, has been a significant uh, encounter to, to historic football clubs with, with a lot to share and a lot of memories that they've been created over the years. And it is a, a, a really nice, uh, a solid footballing fixture in terms of the values and, and how, how the, the, the games over the years, they represented uh, the British game. Uh, the memories are always uh, from Spain, from a, a very, very young age, uh, following the, the Spanish league and clearly you always uh, were attracted to uh, where, as a young boy, they tell you that the game is born in, in, in England. So you're always interested to the games that are coming from, from, the, from the British uh, competition and clearly those memories are completely different from, from uh, individual players, more than, more than teams and from that point, uh, been able to create some good memories that you want to try to uh, carry on and replicate on the street when you play with your with your with your friends. Um, so it'll be a, an exciting an exciting footballing occasion, really. Might we see Tom Cleverley at the weekend? Yes, Tom is uh, is fully fit now. He's had a, a little bit of a uh, had a virus over the weekend, just a, a cold. Uh, that uh, stopped him from training for a couple of days, but now he's back in full fitness. It's just making sure that he gets he gets uh, uh, enough work in order to be considered 100%. So he's just um, not far away from being available to to the squad. Uh, it's been a good break for Leighton Baines as well. How has he reacted to his uh, friendly appearances? Well, as you can imagine, it's exactly what he needs. He's getting in contact with with the football and and have uh, match-related situations and developing that match fitness that he needs. Uh, we need to be cautious because it's been, uh, it was a re-injury and, and a, long, uh, a long period of time that he's been sidelined. So we're going to give him as much time as we can. But it's been a really positive period. Uh, a lot of good work. He's, he's played a behind closed doors game. And uh, every day that he's, he's spending in training is a real uh, step forward to go towards getting that full fitness and being available for, for the squad. So I think it's too early to, to know when it's going to be that moment that it can be introduced into the team, but uh, certainly every day is a, is a step forward towards that. Snod's Everton Aston Villa is retro day on Saturday. We've got the retro programme that features your good self. And what about this? <laughs> a magazine from 1987, a rake like Ian Snowden looking ahead <laughs> to the Merseyside derby. We're banging form, says Snod's. And we were banging form, weren't we? We were all them years ago. And uh, I looked about five stone lighter, I think, as well, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, had the 
had the long hair and the muzzy, uh, as we can see from the picture. Not a bad looking kid in them days, was that? That's a decent picture to tell you. You're in good company there, aren't you? Oh. Lionsy, Sharpie, Reedy, Rats. Fantastic, great company. Uh, proud to be on, on that board. But uh, as I said, we had a terrific time, uh, terrific team as well, and uh, some great players on there. It'll be a fun day, retro day, it always is, but there's a serious business, mm. and Evertonians will expect three points on Saturday. Yeah, and rightly so. Uh, there's no easy games, we know that in the Premier League. Um, we got a little scare with Sunderland when they got back to Tuol. Uh But Aston Villa, yeah, they've got a new manager, mm. but I don't believe it'll, it should make all that much difference. He's been there only probably 10 days, 12 days or so. Uh, I look at their team on paper, I look at our team, and I know on paper it counts for nothing, but Goodison Park, three o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, I expect Everton to take three points against Aston Villa. We'll have to work hard mm. and we'll have to be we'll have to be composed as well. Um, and patient. Patience the word, because it could be difficult. They could sit back and it could be quite hard. But I expect us to get three points either way on Saturday. You always do, don't you? Yeah. And that wraps up another Everton show. The countdown to the most played fixture in English top flight football is well and truly on. Saturday's meeting will be the 201st top division clash between Everton and Aston Villa. A terrific stat that speaks volumes for the consistency of both clubs over the years. My thanks to Snods for his input this week and to you all for watching. We hope you've enjoyed it and if you have, join us again next week. Same time, same place.